NGDF recruitment and training suspended. Coffee bags and school materials airlifted. And schoolboys rugby league championship gets underway. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayre. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Tuesday's news. Prime Minister James Marapa has directed the immediate suspension of training at Goldie Barracks and the repatriation of all recruits back to the point of recruitment. In his capacity as Prime Minister and Minister for Defence, James Marapa issued a letter to the Defence Force hierarchy at Mary Barracks immediately requesting the Defence Secretary to appoint an external investigator to deal with the saga. This comes after 166 recruits were dismissed missed from training last week due to discrepancies in the recruitment process. The call by the Prime Minister was made one day after the 166 recruits were removed from training at Goldie. In the letter addressed to the Deputy Commander, Commodore Philip Polewara, the Prime Minister stated that he was quite concerned with reports coming out of Goldie. He stated, and I quote, I have been informed that the Defense Council, in its decision number 103 of 2019 in 2019, was to freeze recruitment until the recruitment system is reformed to ensure the biases are completely removed from the recruitment process. However, PHDF leadership has not had here to its own council's decision. End of quote. Before signing off in the last paragraph, the Prime Minister directed for the immediate suspension of training at Goldie and requested the Defence Secretary to appoint an external investigator to look into this saga. Last Tuesday, 166 recruits were called out from the 354 recruits who were enlisted to commence basic military training. These 166 were found to have irregularities outlined in three categories. 101 of them had failed the medical tests, 36 had ghost names, and 28 were overaged. Irregularities that were overlooked by recruitment offices at Mary Barracks. The continuous dishonesty in the enlistment of PNGDF recruits is not a new issue to PNGDF. In 2019, recruitment was suspended due to numerous reports of bribery and nepotism by high ranking serving members. While reports of that investigation has not been released to the media, the Prime Minister says it is clear the internal investigations have not worked out. Now, while these talks are going on at the top level, it is the recruits at the Goldie Training Depot who have already been psychologically affected since last Tuesday. Meanwhile, the recruitment training at Goldie has been altered, awaiting further the decisions from the PNGDF headquarters here at Mari Barracks. Tekla Gunga, National MTV News. Defence Secretary John Akipe told MTV News this afternoon that the department is in the process of drafting the terms of reference for an external investigation into the recruitment saga. Ms Akipe has also acknowledged receiving the Prime Minister's directive. Meanwhile, Chief of PNG Defence Force Major General Gilbert Oropo is attending the 12th biannual Indo-Pacific Army's Chiefs Conference in Hawaii. The theme for this year's conference, Environmental Impacts on Land and Littoral Operations. In his opening address at the plenary session, Major General Toropo highlighted that the region's nations may not always agree and have different perspectives based on cultural and national security interests. Other presentations included military responses to the impacts of climate change and the increasing importance of logistics, transportation and disaster response planning. Major General Toropo is accompanied by the Force Sergeant Major Donald Gallum and three senior staff. He's due back in the country this weekend. 
Prime Minister James Marape says PNG has no issues with Australia's security arrangements between UK and USA to forge an alliance in the Indo-Pacific region. This will enable Australia for the first time to build its nuclear-powered submarines with US technology. China isn't happy with the agreement. The Prime Minister commented on this issue yesterday before leaving for New York to attend the UN General, Me General Assembly meeting. A uh, country on its own, they are there to decide their own uh, uh, sovereign policy in respect to uh, the military strategy or the uh, foreign strategy. I am not uh, uh, at a place to, to uh, influence Australian policy in as far as the uh, internal security is concerned. That is a call they make, uh, and I respect fully the call they made. Uh, but we also understand that the total security of our region, uh, we have a very peaceful uh, part of planet Earth. We want to protect that uh, peace and serenity. And if any activity uh, partner nations close to us work in, this, in, in as far as uh, securing peace is concerned, we got no problem. A medical doctor working at Daru Hospital became the latest death due to COVID-19 reported in less than two weeks. The doctor was medevaced to Port Moresby last Tuesday when she suffered severe distress and sadly she succumbed to the disease at the, over the weekend. Chief Executive Officer of Daru Hospital, Dr. Nico Wotai, said Daru is experiencing a third wave of the pandemic and as of Tuesday, the hospital had reported 89 positive cases over a period of two weeks. Hospital had reported three deaths last week, two of which were positive inpatients, one a surgical patient and the other one was a medical admission. PNG Health Workers Christian Fellowship has a different view of receiving the COVID-19 vaccine. National President Sister Rachel Poya told MTV News that taking the vaccine should be an individual choice. She said this at the fourth biannual PNG Health Workers Christian Fellowship Conference in Juwaka Province. PNG Health Workers Christian Fellowship vision is to address health issues in a spiritual manner. National President Sister Rachel Poyer says health workers should not be forced to get the COVID-19 vaccine. She said from a Christian view, provincial health authorities should promote Christianity and incorporate it into their corporate plans to bring healing to the patients. We don't affect you to make medicine. And we encourage all the PHAs, you trust the blood of the Lamb. Dig deeper in Jesus, trust him, and prove that your God can heal, your God can do anything. PNG Health Workers Christian Fellowship Conference is a biannual event where its members in the health professional and allied health workers meet to have seminars about Christian health, networking, and discuss ways to impact the failing state of health in PNG through Christian Health Ministry. Health workers are encouraged to show kindness and love when treating patients. If you're a clinician or non clinicians, we are all health workers. We work towards patient care. Therefore, we said that we have to call ourselves Health Workers Christian Fellowship. Jiwaka PHA CEO Thaddeus Turi says the greed of power and leadership in PNG is a cause of poor health service delivery to the people. He said transformation will only come if PNG is healthy in all aspects of life. This is the root cause why elsewhere are not delivered to God's people. I for one trust that PNG will as Christian fellowship for all in such conferences annually. We are seeking God's guidance and direction. Vasanatha Yama, National MTV News, Mount Hagen. The Kabum Health Center of Kabum District in Morabe is one health facility that has been without basic drugs since December last year. The health center is a rural facility that serves a population of over 13,000. District Aid Post Supervisor Kevin Giblin said that the delay is with the government's contractor LD Logistics that's responsible for distributing medical supplies. This is what the dispensary looks like at the Kabum Health Center. No medicines, especially basic drugs. According to Kabum District Aid Post Supervisor Kevin Giblin, the last supply the health facility received 
was in December last year. People come to Marasin and me play talking more, especially low pain Marasin, when them shoot Marasin like Amoxilin. Me play Sari Morigo, Piney Mrol stores. Giblin said, despite sending the orders for medical supplies to the area medical store in Lay this year, they still haven't received their supplies from January to September. The distribution of the medical drugs from Lay's medical area store is the responsibility of the government's contracted company, LD Logistics. The whole province saw that the problem is with LD. When it was with uh, area medical stores, we get we are getting our supplies full. Hurry up. Now, with the LD, it's lo making a lot of delay. It's suffering the people of uh, Morobe province and its uh, health facilities. So problem is Plapainim, or Walkman Mary, looking for him. problem is with the LD. Kabum district is one of the nine districts of Morobe. It is a rural district that is accessed by air and sea transport. Kabum Health Center is the main health facility that serves a population of over 13,000. Currently, most aid posts are closed and the health center is operating on two basic drugs. Last Marasin Nami Plaisim, 125 milligram amoxicillin, blow baby, na electromycin 250 milligram tablet, and that's all. I know that more. And last week, uh, me played in uh, a week ago, um, supplies blow me play, it come. So last week, testing me play, go down low. Wasu, you go check him, um, one M blow, MV Alibu, um, you know that. So me play, come, hand nothing. Meanwhile, Lay Media contacted LD Logistics in Lay to get a response. We received a message from the manager today advising us to talk to the National Department of Health in Port Mosby. LD Logistics is yet to clarify why there has been a delay in the distribution of medical supplies to the Kabum Health Center. Julie Badui, OA, National MTV News, Lay. National MTV News continues with more stories after these messages. Stay with us. Welcome back. Teachers from Wa Primary, a rural school in Kabum, come from the surrounding communities. Head teacher David Ipmang said the community had requested teachers who are locals to be posted at the school as a strategy to keep teachers. Mr. Ipmang said the geographical location of the school often resulted in inconsistencies with teachers from outside who take postings at the school. And we are local officers, most, most of us. All the teachers teaching at the so Wap Primary School are locals from surrounding communities. The school and community had requested for local teachers as a strategy to keep teachers in the school. The geographical setting of the school often resulted in teachers not turning up to take positions at the school. It's because of the land features, you see. For example, land or example, they come here and Lifestyle, na environment, blow them. Oh, I'm buying in a pa, meti ma, blow me play loy. So I'm buying in a feels good lo stuff. So most of time, most I come or back home. But me play it, no matter what, when I can have some play fishing, me play stuff. Wap Primary School is located in Wap Village in Kabum Selapet LLG. It is geographically located at the mountain top and is surrounded by mountains and cliffs. The intention to have locals as teachers in the school was because they would be familiar with the geography. We have to work along with the situations. So our whole aim is to get a job done for teachers, make sure we do the teaching, the students learn. Teaching and learning must take place as teachers. We are trained for that. Wap Primary School has a student population of 200. The school has started a project to build a new classroom, which is due to be opened in October. It was registered by Morabe Governor Ginsen Saunu in 1992. Shalin Eri, National, MTV News. 
Marbe's Programme Advisor for Education, Keith Tangui, said the National Department of Education would not backdate schools that have missed out on government tuition fee subsidies. This was announced to provincial program advisors during a conference two weeks ago. Over 600 million kina was budgeted by the national government this year as tuition fee subsidies. However, Mr. Tangui said the department shouldn't implement such policy but pay what rightfully belongs to the schools in order for them to operate. Morbis Program Advisor for Education, Keith Tangui, said the National Department of Education should reconsider the policy of not paying schools the outstanding government tuition fee subsidies. Tangui's statement follows an announcement made by the Education Department to Provincial Program Advisors for Education throughout the country during a conference in Kiunga, Western Province, two weeks ago. He said the money belongs to the schools and must be paid to the schools. So that there's a policy now? And that policy is to, uh, if schools have not received any GTFS, GTFS from uh, first quarter or second quarter, they will not be paid, uh, which didn't go down well with me as the provincial program advisor for this province. Morbe is a huge province and each school that missed out on the GTFS are rightly they owe the department to pay that money back to them so that they can receive the money. Rather than making a policy which is uh, not the kind of policy that we should have in the department. This year, the national government budgeted over 600 million kina for GTFS to be paid to all schools throughout the country. The funds are currently being paid in quarterly installments and in very small amount to the schools. According to the head of Morbis Education Division, Kate Tangui, the department owes outstanding GTFS to over 50 schools in Morbe including elementary, secondary, and TVET institutions. Where's that money that should be paid, but you're not paying them? Where is it going? The Department of Education, the, uh, especially the TFF office, has to clarify that to the nation, so that everybody is aware that that money for, like for example, St. Paul's Primary School, they didn't get anything for the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter. They got a right to recoup all that money for this year. But then the department is saying, no, we cannot pay that money. So where's that money going? They go tell the parents, the, the government, the people, where that money goes. Tangui said schools miss out on the GTFS when they submit incorrect bank account details of their school to the GTFS office in Port Mosby and when they fail to produce acquittals. He said once corrections are made, the schools should be paid their outstanding money so they can continue to operate. And the number of students per school should be honored. And if a school is not uh, received a TV because of non acquittal or non uh, submission of uh, data, well, they must backdate all those money back to the school. Rather than making a shortcut policy, uh, which has not gone down well with Morocco, for example, we don't agree with that. So our education department must change that policy and pay all the uh, outstanding. Um, Money back to the schools. So the Julie Badui Owa, National MTV News, Lay. A total of 200,000 kina was presented to Sogeri Police Station and Abisi Atabu Community Church by landowner company Rodco Limited. This is part of the 5 million kina development package given to Rodco Limited by the Department of Commerce and Industry. The funds will be used to renovate the police station and build a new church. The Sogeri Police Station and Bisi Atabu Community Church yesterday received 100,000 kina each to renovate the buildings. Sogeri Station Commander Max Maso said the station has been in bad state for over five years and he thanked Rodco Limited for stepping in to assist. Uh, Rodco has identified after all this long and this is ever the one of the first, one of ever the first uh, landowner group which has been established within a short period, but they have recognized us with the service that is lacking in ourselves. Want them this law? Me like talk to you. Lord Rodko, want them all get a team. Long and we said only been looks away where they will get benefit in the long term service. Bisi Atabu Community Church Pastor Jack Tales said the community has also been contributing money for a new church building 
and thanked Rodco Limited for the assistance to ease the burden. I didn't write a letter to him, but I'm looking hard from Mipla, cry from Mipla, pray from church member. And me drive come to your pastor, me can pledge him 100,000 for the new church. Now today, and me carry him, kai kai, and me point him hard, look, talk, talk. During the presentation, Acting Assistant Secretary for SME Simon Philip told the community to make good use of the money. No can continue using money, nothing, nothing. You will must invest. You will invest all these people all company. You will have a partner. You will buy CS. And place me how we will buy killing big place me you na. Kisi more than something you go na big rasta solo juicy no place me na go. On top of the presentation, two buses, one tractor and a Toyota truck were also donated. Podivai National MTV News. And now looking at the Nasfund market report, the Kina opened unchanged at 0 0.2850 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina will buy 0.2775 US dollars, 0.3782 Australian dollars, 0.391 New Zealand dollars and 29.89 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York closed, gold is trading lower, coffee closed lower, cocoa and copper closed higher. Crude oil is trading lower, palm oil closed higher and copper closed lower. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed lower, the ASX 200 is trading lower and the All Ordinaries is trading lower. National MTV News continues with more stories after these mysteries. Stay with us. Welcome back to the news. Every year on 21st September, International Peace Day is observed and celebrated around the world. Today, this event was celebrated by the Peace and Good Plus Sindan Foundation, hosted by founder Wat Kitty. World Peace Day is commemorated to strengthen peace among nations by observing 24 hours of non-violence and ceasefire. The World Peace Day is an event sanctioned by the United Nations General Assembly and has approved this to honor issues such as conflicts and gender-based violence. As for this year's theme, Recovering Better for an Equitable and Sustainable World, the event was hosted by the WK Kiddy PNG Peace and Good Sindown Foundation Inc. This foundation Inc. has been taking the lead in the event as a way of promoting peace whilst in the midst of dealing with COVID-19. Managing Director for Wellness Lodge, Fiona Reinhardt, was given the opportunity to address issues of gender-based violence to commemorate this day. I truly believe we need to design social, spiritual and polit political solutions to create a foundation and a platform for peace at home, in our clans, in our tribes, and in our nation. As a mother and a woman entrepreneur, I stand here as a voice for the majority of women and children of this beautiful nation. France Foundation's Tessie Soy was also present to make her remarks to observe this day. I would like to encourage each of us today in sharing that to achieve a better world and a better Papua New Guinea, that the actual answer to peace lies within yourself. If you do not have peace in yourself, then forget about trying to actually bring peace to others. The answer lies within. Founder for WK Kiddy, PNG Peace and Good Sindown Foundation Inc., Wat Kiddy was privileged to have this day celebrated as he gave his closing remarks in the presence of former KVN MP, Ben Maika and delegates and urged the government to recognize this day in the years to come. We are a small number of people here, but the Spirit of God is mighty and powerful. He will send this message out. So you may get all power, 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 money, and then start wanting to give me now. All man talk, talk here. All carry power, want to come to talk here. You black carry power here. Oh, we will only step here. We exercise it. And we're exercising it, and we're saying we want change. We want international intervention. We want somebody to help us. Papua New Guinea is lost. We need help. 
Whilst the event was celebrated today, a formal dinner will be held later tonight to present the Peace Awards for 30 recipients in various categories. Jamie Harrow, National MTV News. Chukar Sports is next to all the details after the break. Chukai Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. The Southern Confederate Under-14 squad is geared up to kick off the 2021 Kumul Petroleum National Schools Rugby League Championships tomorrow at the All Search National Football Stadium. Southern Confederate select side will play their first match against the New Guinea Island Confederate. We caught up with the Southern Confederate under 14 team during the captain's run this afternoon at NFS Oval 2. Looking anticipated and energetic, team manager Joel Opos says the boys are ready to meet their rivals from the islands, Northern and the New Guinea Islands region tomorrow. I've been uh, with my under 14 boys from uh, Southern, Southern Jordan. Now, we have, uh, we have been into uh, several, two, three weeks of training. And uh, I hope my South side are really, really prepared to meet uh, those guys who are coming in. Of my South side boys, will, under 14 boys will do something good when they do their playing games tomorrow morning. Two weeks ago, the Southern Confederate had its trials to select their squad for the Kumul Petroleum National Schools Rugby League Championships. A 20-man squad consisting of five players from the Mosby South, Mosby Northeast, Motukoita and Mosby Northwest were picked to represent the Southern Confederate. The select side has been working hard towards the lead-up to the championships with support from the Mosby South MP. Justin Chajango is really cooperating with South side because he also funded some money to go for trials. And now he's also willing to sponsor us with Je uh, Jesse and Boots as well. The Southern Confederate under 14 team will play their opening game against the NGI Confederate tomorrow at 9 a.m. We are happy to accommodate and stay with them and be friendly and all that. Suli Suli, Trukai Sports. The Port Moresby Rackets Club's training camp for junior squash players continues during the current school holidays. The juniors had their fitness levels tested as they visited the high performance centre at the Sir John Guy's indoor stadium. A training camp for junior squash players is currently underway during the school holidays as 17 youngsters aged between 7 and 19 years old continue with the development in the sport. The camp was organized by the Port Mosby Rackets Club as part of the initiative to promote the sport of squash in the country. The junior players paid a visit to the High Performance Center at the Sir John Guy's Indoor Stadium as the trainers ran drills and tests to assess the fitness and agility levels of the participants. This is part of our junior development program for our squash juniors. Um, term 2 holidays we had one. We had the first Trukai camp. Um, and now this is the second holiday holiday camp for the squash juniors. We have 17 of them in the development squad, aging from 7 to 19 years old. Um, this the first day today we we're, we're having the HP high performance session just to get fitness level, get their baseline. So we'll use that as their starting point, and then in the next next holiday camp we expect them to improve from their from their fitness level. So. Day one is we're doing our fitness level. Day two and day three we'll be at the squash courts, um, getting our strength and conditioning and more, more squash work with Coach Marako. For the older participants in the training camp, the visit to the High Performance Center will greatly assist them in their preparations for upcoming tournaments and international competitions. So the next tournament that these kids are uh, going to look forward to is the Pomasi Squash Open, um, which will be held on the 1st to the 3rd of October. So... All, we're all expecting all these juniors to participate, um, especially in the open event, so that they have their, their vie for a spot for Birmingham Commonwealth Games. Um, after that, um, at the moment, a lot of international games have stopped due to COVID. So this is the only one they're actually looking forward to after a shutdown for almost over a year. Um, 
Um, hopefully when the borders open, we are, we are back out sending the kids out for the junior tournaments out. Huxley yeah. Lovai, Chukai Sports. The inaugural Douglas Guys Tribute Sevens in New Ireland province has been hailed a success with a display of talents over the three days tournament outside Kavian Town. 34 teams from within the province took part in the challenge in honour of the late Douglas Guys, the former PNG Puk Puk Sevens coach. President of New Ireland Rugby Union says the tournament is an eye opener with more better plans for next year. The Lugagoon Oval in East Coast Nalik along Bulumingski Highway played host to the three-day tourney. 34 teams in New Ireland participated. However, three Port Mosby based teams were also invited to participate as exhibition playoffs. This was to showcase attempts to inspire and improve the level of rugby in New Ireland province. President of New Ireland Rugby Union Charlie Melacon said as the first of its kind, the tournament signals hope to revive the code. The first two days concluded with fixtures between the 34 teams with finals played on day three. In the cup finals, Funders Rugby Union Club of Lugagun Village are the inaugural Douglas Guys Tribute Sevens Cup champions. Funders sealed a home ground victory 12-7 over nearest arrival Sappers. Navalos Brothers Team 1 defeated Junction Brothers 14-12 for the plate, while Luara Wanderers Team 2 reigned 10-7 over Madina Hawks in the bowl final. Jagla Power Jr., Trukai Sports. And that ends Chukai Sports. The weather details coming up next. Chukai Sports. Chukai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. A look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region. Mostly cloudy with chances of patchy rain in Port Moresby. Cloudy with possible overnight showers in Daru. Cloudy periods with some showers in Caramount, Popandetta and partly cloudy with a few showers in Alotau. In the Momasu region, cloudy with chances of a shower or two in Lai and partly cloudy with chances of a few showers in Medang, Wewak and Vanimo. In the New Guinea Islands region, partly cloudy with chances of a shower or two in Loringau, Kavian, Kokopo and Rabaul. Showers easing, then partly cloudy weather in Kimbe and mostly cloudy with a few showers in Boka. And in the Highlands region, cloudy periods with morning fog in Mount Hagen, cloudy with rainy periods, then morning fog in Goroka, Kondiawa, Mendi and Wabeg. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus, with you always. And that's been the new sport and weather for today, Tuesday 21st of September 2021. Until next time, pleasant viewing, be safe and good night.